How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003. This is the uh, the remake. It's uh, directed by Marcus Nispel, uh, stars Jessica Biel, and is produced by Michael Bay. This is one of the funniest things uh, when uh, the movie Ouija came out, a lot of people were like, Michael Bay's producing a horror movie? What's that about? And I'm like, he's been producing them for a while. Uh, this remake actually, uh, you know, there had obviously been remakes before it, but a lot of people cite this 2003 uh, Texas Chainsaw as the beginning of the big remake slash reboot boom. Pretty much every major horror movie that had existed before got remade after the success of this movie. People thought the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's a classic. There's no way you can touch that. There's no way you can do anything to that movie. And then they did, and it was a financial success, and then it happened for everything. But also, since it was the first of all those remakes, it's uh, remembered a lot more fondly than a lot of the other ones, even though as far as quality goes, it's not necessarily the best out of all those remakes that were to follow. Now, I, in general, I really want to stay positive on this channel, and especially because I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of people grew up with this movie. This is 2003. A lot of people have really fond memories of it when they were younger. I'm not the biggest fan of this movie. Um, I think it's a above average slasher, you know, not a, a great one, a, a good B slasher, but when you say this is a remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a new version of one of the best horror films of all time, I mean, it's one of my top ten favorite movies, not just horror, but in general and you try to say that this is the the new version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm like, it's it's not anywhere as good. And it's one of those things, me being a, a huge fan of the original, I would pretty much, no matter what, not really jive with them remaking it. And to be fair, it is an okay movie. It's just, when you compare it to the first, um, I mean, just to... To set things out, after the prologue sequence, which a uh, good job getting the original narrator back, that was cool. But after the prologue sequence, it opens up with your kids in the van, and they're playing Sweet Home Alabama in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They're playing Sweet Home Alabama. Those, <laughs> that's supposed to be this big mood-setting song and it's a song about a completely different state. I mean, it's a good song, but it's a misguided choice, and that's a lot of the stuff here um, is just just off a little bit. They uh, replace a lot of the characters. Um, none of the teenagers, I don't think any character actually, has the same name as they did in the first one, save for Leatherface. Um, the Franklin equivalent character? He can walk in this movie. And at first, because they're in the van sitting down for a while, I thought, oh, hey, there's Franklin. That's cool. And then they get out of the van, and he's walking around. I'm like, what? Well, Franklin can't walk. And in this one, Grandpa can talk. I'm like, no. Um, and also, like, they, they do a different take on the hitchhiker. And in this movie, she's like a girl and she's all traumatized and scared and being all creepy like oh, oh no don't let them get me and you think okay that's you know a creepy traumatized person a good enough start but when you compare it to the original hitchhiker who's you know just so great and effortlessly creepy and how he burns Franklin's picture and I remember that so well and it's so clear and great, and then it's like, okay, you gave a creepy but different performance, but it's just not near as good or memorable. And also in this film, uh, Leatherface is... Uh, the first one, uh, 
he is mentally handicapped, and in turn, you gotta see the implication of the the setting, the the world, and the characters around them being put onto this vulnerable guy, and how it turns him evil that way. And it's a really a tragic character. And this one, he's a, a mean, brute-like character, and it's again a lot less depth and you get uh, what I think is a terrible mistake they actually have Leatherface take off his mask once in this movie and it's something I don't think they did in any of the other movies ever Leatherface always kept his mask on when he was on screen and also when he takes the mask off he briefly changes it to I think one of his worst masks in the series, and luckily he doesn't keep it on for very long. It's just put that on like, oh, that's a bad mask. Uh, but yeah, Leatherface, I also think he doesn't have the same depth. Gunnar Hansen is the guy who set the character, and it's iconic. Um, but the one thing that people will cite as uh, an improvement in this movie would be the, uh, the sheriff, Sheriff Hewitt, um, he comes in and he's, you know, scene chewing and he'll mess with the people and, I mean, small, small spoiler, but I think most people know really on the bat, three, two, one, he's in on it, which you should know from the moment he steps on screen, but minor spoiler, he's in on it and that's one thing is, you know, you'll meet other people that are kind of spread out that are also in on it. And the first one, it was a very, it felt like a family affair. You know, you saw the people and who the family was. And it's like, oh man, there are these people, this family living out in the middle of nowhere like that. And then this new one, just having random people be in on it. I mean, I guess they probably are related. But it goes from being a family to a conspiracy. And I really didn't like that either, but I don't want to be too negative. And like I said, almost all the faults of this movie are when you compare it to the original. And if you forget that it's the remake of Chainsaw, it's a totally passable slasher. So I don't want to be too negative on it. It's a lot darker. It's really grungy, although unfortunately the way they film it, it's uh, very clean cinematography. A good grungy sets, although there's a weird part, the original had all these cool bone decorations which are absent. The one part you do see really cool uh, decorations is baby dolls, which is kind of, okay, you had bones, where'd the baby dolls come from? I get the bones because they were the meat people. But anyway, I, like I said, I don't really want to be too negative on this movie because when you do see it as its own thing, it's a pretty cool dark slasher, but when you compare it to the classic, I mean, you're talking a good slasher, which is good, but compared to one of the top ten horror films of all time, it's just, it's, ah, it's, it's I, I can't compare. Um, but anyway, overall, it's fine, and it's best to think of it as its own entity. Um, not bad, but definitely watch the original, unless you're, uh, you know, not really a fan of older films. I know there's some people that, you know, in the new generations that just can't take it. Uh, but anyway, um, the channel is uh, doing pretty well. i like to thank everyone who's liked and subscribed. And I, I hope I wasn't too negative in this video. I really don't like to be. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day. And I'll see you guys next time. If I remember to do the end cards right, there should be a slasher review playlist down here. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you next time.